Unfortunately, these are dry electrical storms. No rain will come from them. But something else will. Something worse than hunger. Lightning has ignited the dry grass of the outback. The kangaroos can easily outrun a grass fire. Almost 10% of arid Australia can burn like this in a single year. In a matter of hours, the fire consumes what little forage there is. Rusty has to move on. really nowhere to go. Not this time. Parts of desert Australia are in the grip of a once in a century drought, while heat waves smash temperature records. Nothing that lives here has ever experienced anything like it. Rusty included. Some are suffering from severe malnutrition and dehydration. But if anyone can survive this, it's a red kangaroo. Human bodies are about 60% water. Rusty's is over 70%. Even in a heat wave like this, he can survive levels of dehydration that would kill most humans. Reds only sweat when they're on the move. At rest, they pant, which uses less water than sweating. Raising their breathing rate to over 200 breaths a minute reduces their deep body temperature and cools their brains. And of course, they cover their limbs in cooling saliva. But there's a price to pay. Licking uses up precious water if the drought continues much longer, this form of cooling will be too costly. The kangaroos stay under whatever shade they can find. When times get this tough, females switch off their milk supply. Maternal instinct is strong, self-preservation is stronger. Unweaned offspring outside the pouch are the first to die and the young in the pouches are next. As it dies, the female reactivates her waiting embryo. But if the drought persists, it too will die, and she will stop reproducing altogether. Even Rusty, one of the strongest, is in trouble. In these conditions, the males are the first to succumb, especially the largest, who, like Rusty, need more food. of the red kangaroos is the wedge-tailed eagle's bounty. And it's not just the kangaroos that are suffering. The drought is taking its toll everywhere. Predators turn on each other to protect a tiny piece of rancid meat. This is the last remaining waterhole. stagnant and salty. Ordinarily, the animals would never drink this water. But desperation drives them. The drought makes for uneasy bedfellows.
This is a sign of things to come. Heat waves in Australia are becoming hotter and more frequent. dry heat continues and the casualties mount. Among them are many of Rusty's offspring. In some parts of these desolate lands, drought can kill eight out of every ten kangaroos. But Australia's desert inhabitants are a resilient bunch. After all, these may have been the hottest temperatures for the last hundred years. But these species have successfully weathered the climate for tens of thousands of years. And Rusty is still here, conserving his energy and biding his time. A change is going to come. It always has. After 12 months of merciless drought, the landscape is dotted with the remains of those that couldn't hang on any longer. But in the Australian outback, all bad things come to an end. Eventually. Thunderclouds are gathering in the distance. Rusty seems to sense a change in the weather. Somewhere there is rain, and where there is water, there will also soon be food. He just has to get there. Rusty reaches the area watered by the storms, he finds a world restored by rain. Plenty to eat, plenty to drink. You can almost see the relief and joy in their hopping. stay here and take in the nourishment. In only a few weeks, males and females will have their health restored, and soon they'll be ready to reproduce once again. But before that can happen, they have to make it through this a pack of hungry dingoes. Hunting in a pack more than doubles a dingo's success rate. Normally, they go for the weakest kangaroos in the group. But a pack of this size can take down something bigger. Something like Rusty. His strength is completely restored, and he can travel at full tilt. Rusty doesn't accelerate by bounding faster, but by bounding further. He lengthens his leaps, at times covering 25 feet in a single bound. 
Once he gets past 10 miles an hour, Rusty rockets along with little extra effort, while the dingo's four legs need to move ever faster. Now hitting 25 miles an hour, Rusty's only using about half of the energy the dogs are putting in. They have no chance of catching him. Now Rusty can turn his attention to replacing the offspring lost to the drought. question that he's the dominant male of this gang. The young he fathers will need an advantage to survive a world as harsh and unpredictable as this one. What greater advantage could there be than to begin life as the progeny 